Hi, it's Jan. Well, hello, it's Halloween. Ah! <laughs> I hope you're having a fun one wherever you are and that your costume is a good one. Um, I'm not wearing a costume because I wanted to talk to you about my Italy trip. Um, oh, it was such an amazing um, accomplishment and journey and adventure. And I started off by around September 23rd, taking the E-train to JFK, which was in itself an adventure. Um, but I did it. I got to the tram. I got to the airport. I took the American Airlines flight to Milan, Italy. It was an amazing journey because I used my GPS when I came out of the magnificent train station um, in Milan um, to get to my hotel, which was about a little matchbox, but it was fine. It was all I needed. And then I tried to find my way to the Duomo in Milan. It's just an amazing place. It's the, worth the entire visit, this one stop. But I was by myself, but I climbed all the way to the top. It was quite a journey. Um, and it was Fashion Week in Milan, so all of these beautiful kids were up there posing. Uh, this was the roof of the cathedral that we were treading around up there. It's, it's really magnificent. You can see the whole city. And I was so touched by all of the spires that my friend Jim DeWoody told me there's more spires on top of this cathedral than in any cathedral in Europe or the world. Maybe the world, yeah. And... Um, it's just amazing, but one of the guides that I overheard talking about it said the craftsmen that worked on all of these beautiful spires would not live to see the completion of the cathedral. And indeed, they're working on it all the time to try to maintain and keep it going. There were so many people. I couldn't believe how many people were in Europe and all traveling and having a great time, it seemed like. Everybody was very friendly. Uh, anytime I felt the slightest bit lost, I would sort of approach someone and go, English, English. <laughs> and there was a bit of English speaking, but uh, I was in Italy, so I couldn't use my very bad French. Um, I don't speak any Italian, although now I know how to say allora and prego and um, Guanda Costa, sort of, I think that's it, the three. So finally, I get to the next day and I got to see La Scala, which I'd always heard about. Unfortunately, I couldn't go see um, performance because it was all sold out. I met a lady later in the trip who told me that she made her reservations to go see a production at La Scala six months in advance. Well, I tried three months in advance and they were sold out and my concierge knew nothing about La Scala, so I didn't get in, but I did get in to see a lighting rehearsal. So I got to watch them focusing the lights on the La Scala stage, which was kind of wonderful. I just loved it. So I took a train back to the airport, which is about 30 minutes out of Milan. Taylor prepped me on all of this, so I was able to do it. And I met up with Hannah Banks, Mary, and Taylor, my dear friend for 55 years and who planned this whole trip. He did this amazing job. We took an SUV, very classy, to Lake Como and went right to the doorstep of the place that we were staying. Um, it was a lovely little you know, gorgeous apartment with murals all over the ceiling. I mean, you were in heaven. The The front windows looked out on Lake Como, and we were so excited to maybe see George Clooney. But we found out in the news right after we got there that he was selling his villa. How dare you? We just got here. We wanted to come over for coffee. But at any rate, the Piazza Triste was beautiful and and there was a wonderful stone steps right up beside the where we were staying so i tried to take those each morning and get higher and higher it was a little spooky because there was no one on the steps but me 
but we did really great. And um, then we went to Bellagio. Uh, we always, every new place, we always dealt with sticky keys. We couldn't quite get the keys to work to any place, but it was a lot of laughter, a lot of laughter trying to get in places. Um, we went to the Villa Colata, which was amazing, beautiful gardens, just gorgeous gardens. And I kept thinking all of the gardeners that it would take to keep up all of these beautiful gardens. And I asked the gentleman, I said, how many gardeners do you have? And he said, 10. And I thought, my goodness, 10. They do an amazing job. So many beautiful people that helped us find our way around the ferries, wonderful ferries. And these are just a few of the pictures of the different places we went. We had a great time climbing up mountains and climbing down mountains. So then we went back to Milan to go to Florence and the trains were all sold out. So a hint to travelers, you know, use those apps make reservations early because there's so many people traveling around Europe that all the trains were sold out so we couldn't make it to Florence the regular way but Banks being the intrepid person he is called an Uber what and we took a two-hour trip thank God there were five of us we were able to split the fare uh, to Florence and it was so wonderful. This was my second time in Florence and I really was able to sort of enjoy it at a little bit more leisure pace. The first time I went to Florence, I suffered from what is commonly known the Stenhall syndrome. It's when you see so much art that you look at something and go, second century, Puh! you know, you just get worn out. You're, you, you can't take anymore. It's too beautiful. So I was able to sort of channel down a little bit, you know, and sort of settle down and sort of look at things longer. And I did revisit the Uffizi Gallery. Fantastic. There was a ghetto fight on the steps of the Pitti Palace. Again, a beautiful place that we stayed. Uh, Taylor did just such a magnificent job getting us everywhere we needed to go. And there were parades everywhere, horse parades, flag parades. Uh, it's just wonderful to walk around the streets of Florence. We did run into one sort of anti-Florence activities, um, a citizen of Florence who sort of took us on to show us a church that we wanted to find. And she griped about the present Pope. The, she loved the past Pope, um, but she hated all the activities. But I thought, well, it's like New York City. You know, it's, it's a tourist town, you know, but people do work there. I see them working all the time, mainly keeping everything clean. And it was a very clean city. Once again, packed everybody in Florence was packed. Um, we heard a, an amazing concert by a young pianist whose name, I'm going to get it right, Ishvar Serovsky. He was a pianist, Serovsky. But if you get a chance to YouTube him, and he's great. He's just fantastic. But it was so fantastic to listen to him right there in a little salon with like maybe a hundred people in the audience, maybe 200. I'm bad on crowds sometimes. Um, anyway, the museums, the music, the old world craftsmen going to the museums. It was just great. And bells, bells, bells. Everywhere we went in Italy, the bells were ringing. It was fantastic. Bells. All right. We climbed to the top of San Minuito. I'm, my Italian is terrible and it didn't get any better over there. But it's a beautiful cathedral uh, high on the hills where you can actually look out and see the sunset over Florence or Firenze. And that, that part I can say. Um, but we got there to hear the monks chanting and there was a funeral. It was a very nice pine box that we saw carried out of the cathedral, and there were a lot of mourners, but we stayed out of the cathedral until that was over. But we did get to go inside and once again see this amazing church. Just beautiful, beautiful. And funny, our, this is so synchronistic, a friend of Mary's, Missy, was in Florence and had an apartment there and actually had us over and we had 
a cocktail party right in the middle of everything. It was so great. And Hannah and Banks, we all walked to the apartment and Taylor and had a great time and had wonderful cheeses and saw that amazing place once again with murals on the ceilings beautiful paintings on the ceilings. And then we went to the monk cells again uh, and saw Fra Angelica's paintings. I'm going to put the title of that on the screen. So when you're in Florence, I hope you get to go, you can see this wonderful church that I had visited the first time I was in Florence. Um, Banks then drove us out of Florence and into a wonderful countryside of Tuscany, which I had been before, where I had been before, but this was Hannah's first visit to Italy. So she got to see everything. She got such a, a world of Italy, kind of. Taylor did such a good job planning this trip. And we stayed on an olive farm. It was just so much fun. There were cross-country bikers staying next to us. We went to Rome. Um, the bikes all over the place. Then we stayed in Rome for four days. Not enough time. Can I just say not enough time? But we did see St. Peter's Cathedral and the Sistine Chapel. I finally got to cross that off my bucket list. I've always pined to see the Sistine Chapel. And it was amazing that these guys spent so many years on their backs painting Michelangelo, uh, painting the Sistine Chapel. It's just gorgeous. And, you know, we had to stand in a few lines in Rome, but it, it was crowded too. Everything is crowded. <laughs> I can't say it wasn't. Um, right about that time, we heard that Hamas had attacked Israel. And um, I was nervous to get back. From that moment on, I was just nervous to get back to the U.S. I often thought of my friend, Michael Glenn Smith, who I've known for a long, long time. And he was traveling in Spain at the same time. I was sort of trying to keep up with him on Facebook. And I kept talking to myself and saying, Jan, if Michael Glenn Smith can travel, you can travel. And uh, we're approximately the same age. I may be a little younger. But at any rate, um, I came back to Casablanca and spent the night there. They speak Arabic. It's just so amazing to travel the world. And so the different languages, the different people, the different societies, the different cultures, they're all fascinating. And I would love to travel more, but I find the world is not a very friendly place right now in terms of travel. But you got to tell a lot of people that because there were a lot of people traveling. Um, my friend John Euchre died in Casablanca, and I keep trying to find any information I can about him. So if anybody knows what happened to John Euchre in Casablanca, um, I think he was a little younger than me. I want to mourn the death of Robert Brewstein. He was a great guy and, and was really very kind to us at Abingdon when I was there and letting us, you know, produce his plays. We produced two, The English Channel and The Last Will. Both were about William Shakespeare. And I think that he adored Shakespeare so much that the plays really became my re-entry into Shakespeare. Um, I always wanted to do it and I got to do it a couple of times, but I was just so amazed by the amount of information he had about Shakespeare. He was a great man. All right, um, that's it. I know this is a haphazard. I hope you've enjoyed the picture, but I thought if I don't get this off my to-do list, I'm not going to do it. So I love you guys so much. Mary, Hannah, Banks, Taylor, thank you for taking me with you. It was great fun, and I adored every second of it. It was the highs and the lows. <laughs> All right. Big kiss to everybody. Have a happy Halloween. I hope you did by the time we put this together. Love you very much. Um, be safe. Be peaceful. <sighs> Breathe. God help us all. Love you. And don't forget to subscribe and like. Thanks. Bye.